ऑल दो चेनिंग इज अ पॉपुलर वे ऑफ हैंडलिंग हेस्टेबल कोलिशन देर इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वे ऑफ अचीविंग द सेम एंड इट इज कॉल्ड ओपन एड्रेसिंग The key highlight of open addressing is that it does not require any additional data structure to hold the collided keys, making them super space efficient. In this video, we we'll look at open addressing, the core idea behind it, lay a super solid foundations for probing functions, and understand how the implementation of our core hash table functions changes with this scheme in place. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort based course which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue instead a small focused group of 50 60 engineers every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together this way we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences the course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning nine cohorts and 10 countries engineers from companies like google microsoft github slack facebook tesla yelp flipkart dream 11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say the coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover we cover topics ranging from real time text communication for slack to designing our own toy load balancer to quick buzzes live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business in all we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below So if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course which you see on the left side and the second one is the recorded course which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every 2 months and it will go on for 8 weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings the decision is totally up to you the course details prerequisites testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me/masterclass and i would highly recommend you to check that out i put the link of uh, the course in the description down below so if you are interested to learn system design go for it check out the link in the description down below and i hope to see you in my next course So conflicts are inevitable in hash tables as we are trying to map a large set of application keys into a smaller range of your hash table right so when you pass different keys through the same hash function you might end up with the same hash key right which is what causes the collision in the previous video we looked at chaining as a way to handling collisions in this one we look at open addressing right chaining required an auxiliary data structure open addressing does not so what exactly is open addressing the core idea of open addressing is that why to have an why to use an auxiliary data structure if your hash table itself has empty slots let's try to reuse them somehow which means that when there is a collision when let's say two application keys hash to the same location one gets placed but we have to find the slot for the second key and that second key the way we would be finding the slot it needs to be very deterministic in nature right so that we do not just we cannot just pick random slot which is available to place the key because then it would be a linear lookup always right or it would be very very incoherent uh, way to look up your keys upon collision that is where you need to know if your particular index you you got a particular hash key or trying to place your key into that slot but if that slot is filled you have to find a different slot deterministically on where should i put my key next right and this is where the idea of probing comes in this is the heart and soul of open addressing right so probing is a function that would help us find the next available slot right and the strategy is obviously called as probing strategy and how it and how we could define it as probing strategy is a function of a given key and an attempt right so for example for a given key i would want to make an attempt zero to find where my key should be placed if your slot is occupied then you would make attempt 1 to find where your key could be placed next then attempt 2 
to find the next slot. If that is also filled, then attempt 3 and so on and so forth up until m, where m is the size of your hash table. So for example, if you have hash table of size 8, you, would, you can make 8 attempts to place your key. If all of these 8 slots are filled, then you would say, hey, I cannot accept any more writes or you may either want to replace one of those key. Right? But the probing strategy is the one that would help you find the next available slot. And this is what the theoretical definition of a probing function is. So, we would always start with open addressing, we would always start with a probing function, a good probing function. And we would start to make attempt zero. If the slot is filled, uh, if the slot is empty, we put it there. If it is filled, then we would make attempt one. So we would invoke the probing function with the key and attempt one. So one, and then we would fire the thing which would spit out another index. We would say if that is occupied or not. We would do this until we find an empty slot and then we place our key there. So obviously we can write as simple of a probing function as it can be, like which returns a static index. We could make it super complex the way we would want. But what does a good probing function look like? A good probing function should generate a permutation of numbers in the range of 0 to m minus 1, both included, so as to cover the entire space eventually. Why? Because obviously, like, for example, if your hash table has a size of 8, which means that you may have to make an attempt 8 times and it should cover all the indexes in your array so that you know that eventually you are you will cover the entire hash table so that if there is any slot available anywhere in the hash table you will be able to find it in any of the attempts that you are trying to make so which is where the way you would be writing your probing function it has to cover all the indexes of your array from 0 to m minus 1 both included. It may be in different order, but it has to be deterministic and it has to be complete so that eventually you would cover the entire hash space. Right? So, how do you implement it? Right? So, implementation could be twofold. It could be pure mathematical implementation or it could be algorithmic implementation. Right? So, the idea would be to find, to pass in that attempt with the key that spits out an index and we'll try that. So, let me take few very simple examples to understand it. So, if I would, if I'm trying to insert a particular key k, my in, and this is my first attempt, my hash table is empty. What I would do is, I would trigger this hash, uh, I would trigger this probing function p of k comma 0, it spits out 5. I would see if the slot 5 is empty. If it is empty, I would fit it there. If it is not empty, I would invoke probing function with k comma 1 because it's my first attempt. Because 0th attempt is gone, I'll try start with my first attempt. My first attempt, it would give me 7 and the next it might give me 2. So it could be any order or it has to be deterministic for a particular key. So for a particular key, I have to get it in a particular order only so that it is deterministic for me. How am I traversing? It might be different order for different keys that is not a problem but it has to be deterministic for a key so that you exactly know from if i cannot find it on index a i would go to index b if it's not in b i'll go to c if it's not in c i'll go to d it might be somewhere in the hash table range, right but it has to be very deterministic so that you can able to find it so given this as a probing function how does our hash table operations change so, how does adding a new key look like? So, what do we do? We find a, we find the free slot. Uh, we try to find a free slot. If we are able to find it, great. If we are not able to find it, we would keep probing the function, so that we, and we would do this until we find the first free slot, uh, first free slot, and then we put the key there. For example, let's say I'm trying to insert a key k1. When I pass it through my probing function attempt 0, it would give me 5. I would try to place my key at location at index 5. Is the index free? Let's say no. Then I would make another call. It gives me 7. Is my key, is the slot available 7? Uh, is the slot number 7 available? No. Then I would make another call. It would give me 2. Is the 2 available? Yes. So I'll put my, I'll place, place my key 2. Uh, place my key k at index 2. Right. And this is what we would call and the probing function would be generating the entire permutation in some deterministic order. Right. 
then how does your second operation lookup look like? So lookup is very similar to adding. What we would do is we would start with if let's say if we are trying to find a key k in my hash table. What I would do is I would invoke a uh, probing function with attempt 0 and then it would spit out some j which is the first index. We will go to that index and see if the key is there or not. If it is there, great, we would return. If it is not there, we would invoke the probing function again that would give out, that would give us another index. If it is there, good enough. If it is not there, we would go to the next one and then the next one and then the next one until we find the key. What is the worst case? The worst case here is we all the slots are filled and our key is not there. So then we would have to linearly go like we are literally accessing all these slots one after another to eventually find out that the key does not exist. So when does the iteration stop? The iteration stops in three states, in three cases. First case is that we are trying to find a key which we find. So first attempt we could not find, we make second attempt, then third attempt and then fourth attempt. Let's say somehow we find a key, that's when your iteration stops, right? Second is your iteration stops when you stumble upon an empty slot. For example, because you are, because the probing function would generate a permutation of numbers, you would always go from one to next to next to next. And if during this iteration, if you find any empty slot, you have to stop. Because once you find an empty slot, after that, you would not have anything in that cycle, right? Because if that slot is empty, you have to stop the iteration. Otherwise, if there were any keys after that, this slot would not have been empty because this is the deterministic order that a probing function is following, right? So your iteration would stop when you stumble upon an empty slot and if you still haven't find your key, which means that your key doesn't exist in the hash table, right? And the third case when your iteration would stop is when you have exhausted iterating over all the slots, which means that attempt 0, attempt 1, attempt 2 and so on and so forth, you made it till attempt n minus 1 and you have exhausted now because it, there could be m slots, you have triggered your probing function m times, which is you have literally accessed m different indexes in your hash table, you could not find a key and that's okay. So which means your hash table is filled and you have exhausted all of your iterations. Right. So this is how your lookups would look like, right? Very similar to add, but just being cautious about when to stop iteration. Now, deleting is interesting. How do you do deletion? The deletion when you are using open addressing and hash function is a soft delete, which means that you are, when you say I would want to delete a key, you are not emptying the slot. There has to be two different notion. First, if the slot is empty and second, if the slot is deleted. Why so? Because of how probing functions work or how our discovery mechanism works. Right? So let me take an example. Let's say the keys k1, k2, k3, all the three hashed at index 5. When key k1, k2, k3 are passed through the same hash function, it spits out 5. Right? So now obviously we cannot place three keys in the same array slot that we have five, right? So that is where we invoke the probing function. Let's say probing function spits out for attempt zero, it spits out five and then seven and then two. So my K1 is slotted at five, K2 is slotted at seven and then K3 is slotted at two, right? Now <clears throat> say we would want to delete K2 and let's say we do a hard delete. We do a hard delete of k2, which means now my k2, which was present at index 7, is gone and my slot is empty. Right? And now let's say we fire a get of k3 uh, of a get of key k3. Now, when this lookup happens, what would happen? Is I would invoke my probing function with attempt 0 on k3. What I will get? 5. Right? Because it is hashed at index 5. But index 5 is hold with k1. So it is not the one which is intended, right? Then we would invoke probing function with attempt one. Let's say it spits out and it spits out seven. We go to seven. We see the slot is empty. As soon as the slot is empty, our lookup function will stop iterating and saying that the key K3 does not exist. But key K3 was there. Key K3 was at attempt two because earlier K2 got slot seven because of attempt one on the probing function. And then hence k3 got at slot 2. So which is where because now you have hard deleted 
your K2, you have emptied the slot 7. So your lookup iteration would need to stop. Otherwise, you can continue always, your lookup will always be linear going through all the slots. So that is very inefficient, right? So that is where as soon as you stumble upon an empty slot, you would stop your iteration and which is where you would never be able to reach K3 in this case, which is why we need a way that differentiates free and delete. So if the slot is empty or a slot is deleted, right? So that we do not stop iteration there, right? We will stop the iteration only when we discover an empty, uh, only when we discover a, an empty slot. Right? But a deleted slot, it's okay. Right? So that's why your deletion, when you're using open addressing, has to be a soft deletion. Right? And what is the limitation? And obviously, grass is not always green. There has to be a limitation of open addressing. The limitation, as you can very clearly see, is that the number of keys that you can put in your hash table is equal to the number of slots that you have. Otherwise, because your probing function is trying to find an empty slot in the array. If your array is completely filled, then what happens then? Either you replace an existing field or existing slot, most probably the last slot, or you would discard your input or you would discard that, hey, I'll not, uh, you would discard the put that you got on your hash table, right? Two ways of handling it. But in general, the limitation of open addressing is the number of keys that you can hold in your hash table is equal to the slots that you have in the array, right? So as soon as your array is about to get filled, you would have to resize and do rebalance and whatnot, which we'll touch upon in the coming videos. But this is the core limitation of open addressing. With chaining, because it required us an auxiliary data structure, you can put in as much of data you want in that auxiliary data structure, for example, a linked list, right? And that would not have been a problem. But here it is a problem and this is a limitation of open addressing. It's still fast enough. If you are able to resize your uh, hash table array, it's really solid method to achieve that which we'll touch upon in the future videos. So yeah, this is all about open addressing. This is all about the foundations of probing functions. In the coming videos, we'll look at detailed implementation of various probing strategies to understand how they function and what are the strengths and weaknesses of this. Right. Nice. So yeah, that's it. That's it for this video. I hope you understand open addressing in depth and you understood how add, delete and lookup functions would alter in case of open addressing along with looking at the limitations of it. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you guys like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys like the channel, give this channel a sub. I post three in-depth engineering videos every week and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.